gonna say bye. Bye. Here we are, going into Adon's room, and there's Adon. Hi. Adon was just like any other kid uh, growing up. Hey, Adon, can't come in my room. It's messy. Loved sports, played football in junior high, and also basketball. I like that picture of him when he was uh, playing baseball. That was one of his birthdays. And he was kind of goofy, and just silly, you know, made funny faces as you can see. So my dad um, called him his chapulin, my grasshopper. He was very energetic all that time. He also had very good grades. In 2004, he graduated from high school and he decided that he wanted to serve his country. He joined the Marine Corps. He was stationed in Iraq. He was a scout sniper. He saw bombs that exploded just right in front of where he was stationed. He was just surrounded by a lot of death and potential for death. And so when he came back, he was not the same young man that left. He did go to the VA, they gave him medication. That was their solution. How could you tell something was not right? He slept all day and stayed in his room all the time, uh, except to go to the bathroom and to get something to drink. He didn't want to do anything. We all knew something was wrong. We all felt something was terribly wrong. Tell me about the day that the shooting incident happened here. Around 2011, May of 2011, he shot 23 bullets into our home from the driveway at about four in the morning. It was unexpected. He thinks he's firing uh, uh, warning shots. Bam, 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 bam. There were pictures that were taken by the police department of all the, the places that were Mm -hmm. impacted. Some of them went, they went through the door, they, there's some bullets that went here, um, up there, there were bullets that shot here, that went up over by the fireplace. One of the panes in the kitchen got broken. I mean, I can't believe you guys weren't hit in this hole. I can't believe it either. So the police arrive very quickly and the cop has drawn his gun and tells him, Turn around, turn around now. Throw it down, throw it down. That was a very scary moment. He was picked up by the local sheriff's department and taken to jail. Adon is indicted with seven different counts over what he did. He was um, found incompetent to stand trial. And so I felt a great sense of relief thinking, oh, you know, Finally, he's gonna get some help. And I waited a couple of weeks and nothing happened. He was still there, so I contacted them. And the person who answered the phone said, well, it'll be eight months to a year. And I was shocked. And I, I asked, how could that be? And she said, you just don't have enough beds. If you're dedicated to, to, to restoring these people's health, you don't say, we'll get to you in a year. Just stay in the waiting room. And your waiting room is a jail cell. And then he waited and waited for a trial and that kept getting canceled and reset and canceled and reset. So he was expected to remain competent in jail without medication, without treatment. And then he was incompetent again. There's a real need to continue the care they were receiving in the state hospital to make sure that they are getting the mental health services and taking their medication to keep them competent long enough to stand trial. Right. That's right. Ironically, the more serious the case, like murder or capital murder, the longer the delays, the more likely that you're going to find yourself in this loop. 
I wonder if that's not cruel and unusual punishment, to, to have this person loop back over and over endlessly. What ended up happening with the case? So up until 2031, and every year there is a review uh, by the judge to see how he's doing. He's been on his medication since May. I call him every day. Hello. Hey, Don. How are you doing? Okay. I'm all right. You know, just working with my doctor. I'm just working with my treatment team. It's okay here. They're working on my discharge. I just got a letter from my lawyer today. Oh, and, good. Uh, so okay. hopefully within the next month or two or yeah. month and a half or something like that, okay. I'm looking at discharge, getting back out there, going to school, and just having a regular life and uh, not being stuck here, you know? Yeah. I am going to study for my criminal justice degree and, uh, you know, pursue a career, something like um, either in mental health counseling what can we do now to make things better and to help a young man who's intelligent have that future, get out there and live his life. What can we do to make that happen? Turn around, turn around. What needs to change in the system to allow that to happen? Here you go, Alon. 